All right, guys. Uh, today, let me explain uh, how methionine is converted to homocysteine and uh, what will happen to homocysteine in our body. So, what is the fate of homocysteine and all that. And what are the different uh, vitamins that are required for conversion of homocysteine into cysteine or into methionine. So, let's start uh, with uh, methionine first. So, methionine is an essential amino acid. As you all know, I, uh, we remember uh, essential amino acids with uh, private Tim Hall. And within that private Tim Hall, we have methionine. So, we consume methionine and uh, methionine will undergo metabolism within our uh, body. So, it will become part of a polypeptide chain and also it will undergo other metabolic fates. One of the metabolic fate of methionine is methionine is converted to S-adenosyl methionine and S-adenosyl methionine is participating in a methylation reaction where a methyl group is donated and once the methyl group is donated S-adenosyl methionine is converted to S-adenosyl homocysteine. Now the S-adenosyl homocysteine will be converted into homocysteine homocysteine once the adenosyl group is taken out adenosyl group is taken out now the homocysteine here it has got two fate if the intake of methionine or if the demand for methionine in the cell is more homocysteine can be converted into methionine or if the demand for cysteine in the body is more if we are, if our cells need more cysteine so homocysteine can be converted into cysteine. So, do, going towards the cysteine formation, homocysteine is initially converted into cystathionine and this cystathionine further down is converted to cysteine and cysteine is an amino acid. That is why, so basically cysteine is a non-essential amino acid. Why? Because methionine is an essential amino acid. As long as you consume methionine in the diet, it means you can synthesize cysteine in our body. That is why cysteine is not essential in the diet. Okay, let's move on to see how homocysteine is converted to cysteine first and then I'll explain you how homocysteine is going back into methionine. So, homocysteine into cysteine formation, we need an enzyme called cystothionine beta synthase. Cystothionine beta synthase. This cystathionine beta synthase enzyme, it needs a coenzyme. And that coenzyme for that is pyridoxal phosphate, PLP. PLP is a, it's an active form of vitamin B6. As you all know, pyridoxine, active form of pyridoxal phosphate, cystathionine beta synthase coenzyme is pyridoxal phosphate. So, if there is sufficient availability of pyridoxal phosphate and cystathionine beta synthase working, so, homocysteine can be converted into cystathionine. Now, the cystathionine can be converted into cysteine by cystathionase enzyme. Cystathionase. Cystathionase enzyme. This enzyme also needs pyridoxal phosphate. Cystathionase enzyme also needs PLP, vitamin B6 derivative. That's how you make cysteine. Now, what happens is, if there is a mutation in an enzyme which is so, in a gene coding for cystathionine beta synthase, if this cystathionine beta synthase is not formed properly, if this, if this is a mutant enzyme, so its activity decreases. Or, if there is a deficiency of pyridoxal phosphate in a body, in, this, in the food or in a person, so when the pyridoxal phosphate is down, cystathionine beta synthase will also decrease its activity. So, during that time what happens, there will be increase in homocysteine levels. And that will lead, that is called as homocysteinemia. It will lead to homocysteinemia, excess levels of homocysteine in the blood. Later it appears in the urine and that is called as homocysteinuria. So there are two conditions, that means one condition, the two terminologies there. One is homocysteinemia, other is homocysteinuria. Homocysteinemia. Homocysteinemia means excess homocysteine in the blood. Homocysteinuria. Homocysteinuria means excess cysteine in the urine. So, whenever it is excess in the blood, it will appear in the urine. So, both the terminologies we use interchangeably. So, but the disease is same. 
Now that's how homocysteine is converted to cysteine using these two enzymes and the coenzyme. Now let's move on to see how exactly homocysteine is converted to methionine. That is done by an enzyme called methionine synthase. Methionine synthase. And this methionine synthase to convert homocysteine into methionine, it needs a coenzyme for that. And the coenzyme for methionine synthase is methylcobalamin. Methylcobalamin, I'll write it as CH3B12. This is a form of cobalamin. We have two forms of cobalamin. One is methylcobalamin, which is needed by methionine synthase. Other is deoxyadenosyl cobalamin, which is needed by methylmelanyl coa mutase. That we will say later, some other time. I will make a video on that. So, methylcobalamin gets into the reaction used by methionine synthase and it is coming out of the reaction as just cobalamin, B12. Now, these coenzymes need to be regenerated in our body, reutilized. So, it has to be converted back into methylcobalamin and that job is done by one more reaction. So, we use N5-methyl, I'll write it as CH3, N5-CH3-THF, that is tetrahydrofolate. N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate will give that methyl group to B12 and that's when B12 is converted to methyl B12. So, N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate means N5-CH3-THF is coming out of this reaction as just THF. So, I can connect the reactions together now. So, it will be something like this. B12 takes methyl group from N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. That's how you are regenerating methylcobalamin. And your N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is coming out as tetrahydrofolate. As you all know that N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, this is the major storage form of tetrahydrofolate. It's a circulating form of tetrahydrofolate. So, this reaction has to go on well in our body so that you can reach, you can convert tetrahydrofolate, you can free tetrahydrofolate from N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. So, this is the reaction which will convert N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate and this tetrahydrofolate can get into other tetrahydrofolate derivative formation. It can be N10-formyl tetrahydrofolate. It can be N5, N10, methylene, tetrahydrofolate or any other derivatives. It can be N5, formal tetrahydrofolate. So, for all those derivatives, you need tetrahydrofolate. Okay. So, this is the reaction which is going to free tetrahydrofolate from N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. Now, what happens is, what happens if there is a deficiency of cobalamin? Consider that there is deficiency of vitamin B12. B12 is down, deficient. When there is a deficiency of vitamin B12, so the reaction which is using the N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate and releasing tetrahydrofolate, that reaction decreases. So, this particular reaction will decrease. So, this will lead to accumulation of tetrahydrofolate as N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. And overall, there will be decrease in tetrahydrofolate. Because tetrahydrofolate is decreased, that will decrease other derivatives of tetrahydrofolate. So, that's how metabolic reactions are affected. It means there is a tetrahydrofolate, but effectively it is not available to make other tetrahydrofolate derivatives. This, is, this will lead to functional folate deficiency. Functional folate deficiency means you have folate here, but all the folate that you have in the body most of the folate, not all, most of the folate that you have in the body is in the form of N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. So, because there is vitamin B12 deficiency, this N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is trapped here. It is not converted to tetrahydrofolate. So, this is called as functional folate deficiency. This entire concept, we call it as folate trap. This is the concept called folate trap and this folate trap is because of cobalamin deficiency okay so if everything is fine if the normal cobalamin is available normal amount of tetrahydrofolate available so at that time homocysteine and if methionine synthase is fine so at that time homocysteine is converted to methionine if just in case if there is a deficiency of methionine synthase or a mutation in methionine synthase or if there is decrease in vitamin b12 or if there is decrease in tetrahydrofolate so there is increase in homocysteine because homocysteine won't be converted to methionine. So, 
there are three vitamins in our body which technically which can lead to increase in homocysteine level increase in homocysteine means which will lead to homocysteinemia and those vitamins are vitamin b6 that is pyridoxal phosphate then vitamin b12 deficiency can lead to homocysteinemia and folate deficiency folate deficiency all these deficiencies folate deficiency so deficiency of vitamin b6 deficiency of cobalamin deficiency of folate all of them they can lead to homocysteinemia later into homocysteinuria and that you can understand by this particular pathway thank you